Okay, doing this video today, lads, on the U values question. This is again from the 2014 exam. The U values question is very, very repetitive year on year, so there's not much need to do a video on many of these. I'll do one or two more later on. Part A is always standard enough. You're going to be given a certain detail of a house, such as the floor, the wall, the window, ceiling, whatever, and you're going to be asked to work out a U value for it. Part B is usually asking you then to base find uh, the heat loss formula or to find out how much money you're losing in heat through a certain area of the house. It's usually based on whatever is happening on part A. So if you look at part A from 2014, you're looking at a concrete ground floor. You're given the thicknesses of all the different elements there and you're given the thermal data of everything you need as well. You notice that for most of it you're given the K value which is your conductivity. So we only have to use one formula in this case. Now when you're answering part A, what you should always try and do is do it out in a table format. It's the most structured, it's the easiest way to learn off, it's very, very repetitive. So what we're going to do is, we're going to draw out the typical table that I need you to do. You should always start off with the material, so you can check off that you have them all listed. The next thing we're going to fit in is our conductivity, that's, that's the format that it's given to us in. We'll include resistivity, but we don't need to use it this time, just in case it's any other question. The thickness is next, and the thickness has to be in meters. And finally, the final table in, or sorry, the final column in your table should be your resistance. Now, the resistance is the important one. That's the one you're looking for. So, we box that off, and we start listing off our materials. So, the first material we're given is the top surface of the floor and we're given a resistance for that. That's going to be your tiled floor, your carpet, whatever. So we just name it as top surface. The resistance that's given to us is 0 0.104. The next thing we're given is the floor slab, the concrete floor slab. The conductivity is given of 0 0.104. Six O. The next one we're given is insulation with a conductivity of 0 0.031. After insulation, we have some DPM conductivity given 0 0.450. We have the sand binding. 0 0.160 and finally you have your hardcore, your layer of hardcore conductivity 1.260 thicknesses are given in millimetres, this can cause problems for some people when they're translating from millimetres to metres simple way of doing it is that you should have three decimal points so what you should do is for example the floor slab is given as 125 millimeters. Now, if I to put my decimal form, it would go after 125 because it's a full number. I want to have three decimal points, so I have to move the decimal point to the left three times. So that means in meters form, that's going to be 0 0.125. You fill out the rest of them based on that, so the insulation will be 0 0.200. The DPM is going to be 0 0.0003. The sand binding will be 0 0.03. And finally, the hard core will be 0 0.225. Now, whether you're given the conductivity or the resistivity, you need the thickness based on either of those to work out your resistance. And the formulas you use is you're going to have your thickness divided by your conductivity. That's the one we're going to be using today. Or sometimes if you have the resistivity, it can be your thickness multiplied by your resistivity. That doesn't apply today. But they're the two you have to learn off. Either of those will give you the resistance of any of these materials. So for instance, for the floor slab, I'm going to take the thickness of 0 0.125 
and I'm going to divide it by the conductivity of 0 0.160. That's going to give me my answer in resistance. So the answer for that one, if these all pre-done out, I'm just going to fill them out really quickly. So the floor slab is going to be 0 0.7813. The insulation is going to be quite high, high resistance, 6.4516. The DPM is almost non-existent. The sand binding, 0 0.1875. And finally, the hard core is going to have a resistance of 0 0.1786. Usually, if you keep those to three decimal points, it's enough. I'm just going off the sample answer, which has four. Three decimal points, you should get full marks. The next stage is to get all of your resistances and total them up add them together. That's going to give me a total resistance of 7.70. Now, you're nearly there. The last stage of calculating your U-value is to take your total resistance and divide it into 1. So that's going to mean it's 1 divided by 7.70, which gives me a U-value of 0 0.1298 watts per meter squared degrees Kelvin. Make sure you include those units at the end to get full marks. So that's your U value found for you. Alright, it's very very straightforward. Learn off those two formulas, get all your resistances, total them, divide it into one, that's your answer. Part B of the question in 2014 and it's usually very very familiar in other years as well is based on the u value that you've just obtained and also using the following data calculate the cost of heat loss annually through the concrete ground floor you're given all of this information such as the dimensions of the floor so that's going to give you your area the average in, uh, internal and external temperatures the heating period the cost of oil the caloric value of oil and 1000 watts you're told is equal to 1 kilojoule per second. Part B can be daunting for lads. Again, it's very, very repetitive. It's a simple formula you have to learn off for heat loss. And the formula is the area multiplied by the rate multiplied by the time multiplied by the cost and that all goes over the calorific value of oil multiplied by 1000. Trying to learn off all of these can be a little bit uh, of, a tr of a trouble for some lads. But basically if you look at the question, all the information you're given, you're just multiplying everything together. You're multiplying everything that's given in the question and you're putting it over calorie value of oil multiplied by a thousand. So you'll see if you kind of walk through this question, every figure is basically going to be on the top line. The area is given to us as 13 by 7. So if you work out 13 by 7, you get 91. That's simple. The rate, you can catch lads out, the rate is the U value, which you've just got from part A, multiplied by the temperature difference. So the U-value from part A was 0 0.1298 and the temperature difference, if it's 21 degrees inside and it's 7 degrees outside, the difference between those two is 14. Okay, so that's all your rate is. The time part of it must be worked out in seconds. So if you're given a heating period of 12 hours a day for 39 weeks, you have to work that out. How many seconds is that? So it's going to be a large number. It's usually in the millions. So the time element of it is going to be 60 seconds multiplied by 60 minutes, multiplied by 12 hours, multiplied by 7 days in a week, multiplied by 39 weeks. Simple as. Finally, the cost should be written down as a decimal form of a euro. So if they tell you that a litre of oil costs 95 cent, you're going to write that down as 0 0.95. And now that all goes over 
sorry, 37,350, which is the value given in the question for oil, calorific value, multiplied by 1,000. The reason you're multiplying it by 1,000 is because the last part of the, of the question tells you 1,000 watts is equal to 1 kilojoule. So when you can just fill in all that information, it's the same every single time, you're going to get a large number on the top, divided by your bottom figure, and that's going to give you an answer of... 52, sorry, 49.59. Okay, when you work out your top line, your bottom line, you divide it into it, 49.59 will be your answer in euros. That's how much money you have lost through heating through that floor because of poor insulation or whatever else. Part C of the U values question is um, generally turning into just a general construction related question. So it's the detailing of whatever you're talking about in the question, the floor in this case. They're telling us a solid concrete ground floor abuts a 350 millimeter concrete block external wall. That just means the floor and the wall are touching other, they're next to each other, which would be standard. Using notes and free on sketches show best practice design detailing which will prevent the formation of a coal bridge at the junction of the floor and the wall. Show typical design detailing from the bottom of the hard core to the top of the skirting board. All they want there when they mean when they say a coal bridge is that they you haven't got a direct link between outside and inside. You have some sort of a break, whether it be through insulation or whatever means you can think of. So the one that I would put in is I'm going to start off by sketching this out in the same structure I always do. I put in my foundation first, reinforce that with my steel rods. I build up my block wall, my outer, my inner leaf. Uh, I put my ground level so I have something to work off. I start building up the hard core. Put in the little symbols as you go along and keep track of it for you. So two or three layers of hardcore. Now I need to have some DPC in place to prevent moisture but if I put DPC directly on top of hardcore it's going to crack and break and rip so we put a layer of sand to prevent that from happening and then the DPC can go in place. Okay, If you have a coloured pen use it for the DPC, I don't in this case, so it's going to be a little more difficult, I'll just put a kind of a scribble line, use a coloured pen in the exam if you can, just label that as DPM. After that we're going to have uh, some insulation for the ground floor, so that's rigid insulation, and we have our subfloor and our finished floor on top of that. So the subfloor is kind of a rougher concrete. Finish floor, a finer finish of concrete. And then we have whatever type of a finish you have on your floor, so tile or your wooden floor or whatever else. I've purposely left a gap here beside the actual wall itself because nowadays they try to encourage people to put a small piece of insulation in between those. We're also going to include the insulation that should be on the inside of the cavity. And we fill up the remainder of the cavity with your rubble. That's just to prevent the actual walls from caving in on top of each other. We're going to have some extra DPC travelling in to prevent any moisture from getting up at the insulation. Wrap it down on the inside of the insulation against the wall and down underground as well. And what you'll generally see nowadays in modern building is these insulated blocks, concrete blocks.